It's Breaking the News with Des Clark. I am Des Clark and this is Breaking the News, the show that breaks the week's news and asks four opinionated panellists to put it back together again. This week we're in Greenock and as always I'm joined by four of the finest comedians on the circuit. On my right we have Stuart Mitchell and Celia AB and facing off against them are Jeff Norcott and Crystal Evans. In the news this week, Scottish Islanders faced more ferry disruption this week after CalMac's biggest ship was hit by a technical fault. It got even worse later on when three replacement buses had to be dragged out of the North Sea. <laughs> After four years of hosting Strictly Come Dancing's sister show It Takes Two, Rylan Clark has announced that he'll be leaving the programme. Clark said he'll be sad to step down, then step forward, then <laughs> catch out to the side, followed by a fox trot out the door. <laughs> And three Iron Age sites in Shetland have been put forward for World Heritage status. It's hoped the sites will join Scotland's current World Heritage sites, such as the Antonine Wall, New Lanark, St Kilda, and, of course, Lulu. <laughs> <laughs> right, you've met the panel. Let's crack on with round one. This is the Broken News Round, where our teams have to guess two major stories of the week that have been mashed together into one single news headline. So, Stuart and Celia, can you tell me what this is all about? President Biden will hold talks with... The owner of Twitter... ...on the first full day of his visit to Northern Ireland and the Irish Republic. Elon Musk has defended sacking... Rishi Sunak... ...when he bought the social media platform last year, but described... ...the leaders of Stormont's main political parties... ...as painful and a roller coaster. <laughs> what a week in news. Oh, Stuart Mitchell, go on then. Try and figure out what our first story is, please. Joe Biden, he's visited Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. Spot on. Well done, Stuart. Yeah, that's the right answer. It is indeed the story of US President Joe Biden's visit to Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland for the 25th anniversary of the Good Friday Agreement. President Biden said he was here to listen as he held talks with UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak before travelling onwards to County Mayo and County Louth, where he has ancestral ties. Biden claims he is 5 eighths Irish. Used to be 7 eighths, but recently got his knees replaced. <laughs> <laughs> what have you made of President Biden's trip to Ireland? Well, I mean, he flew into Belfast International Airport on Tuesday evening. I mean, if he'd have flown into Glasgow, he'd still be waiting in his suitcase. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's nice. It's good to, it's good to see him in there. So Joe Biden... It's funny, though, cos Joe Biden, he visited Belfast and Dublin for the anniversary of the Good Friday Agreement, whereas Hamza Youssef, he visited Guruk and Ullerpool for the anniversary of a bad ferry agreement. <laughs> there we go, it's all been happening this week. So President Biden, Celia, in Northern Ireland, then Republic of Ireland, what have you made of his trip? Can I be honest? Mm -hmm. I don't think we should know where presidents are. <laughs> It sounds like a security threat to be like, hey, if you want to all harm him, he's in Belfast right now. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think they should have privacy. Like, I would hate to be like, Celia AB visits Glasgow. Celia AB checked into her hotel and orders another bottle of fruit for the room. Celia AB put the do not disturb sign on the door. Celia AB appears to be making jam in her bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> Celia AB checks out, covered in jam, really embarrassed, does not want to speak to the reporters. <laughs> and I think they deserve a bit of privacy. Yeah, good And on so you. do I. <laughs> <laughs> the most suspicious bit of that is that you went to Glasgow and ordered fruit. <laughs> yeah, they had to ship it, I think. They had to. Jeff, what have you made of it? President Biden, he's mm. been in Northern Ireland and the Republic. What have you made of it? Uh, he's, he's very old. That's one thing I've noticed. <laughs> <laughs> However, it must be worth it just to hop in Air Force One. I mean, that, for the job, I'd run for president. I'd go everywhere in Air Force One, wouldn't I? Co op. I'd go anywhere. <laughs> I bet on Air Force One you don't have to put your bag underneath the seat in front, do you? <laughs> on Air Force One. Of course, we have an American with us this week, Crystal Evans. Oh, like, every time I see Biden, I'm just like, 
please don't die. Please don't die. <laughs> Although I will say it is very nice for him to go to a part of Great Britain that doesn't remind him of the Great War of 1812, you know? <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's, lo it's lovely to have him here yeah. reminiscing about his uh, childhood in Ireland when he hung about with St. Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> He is really old, though. He's actually the last US person in their 80s to visit Dublin that wasn't being scattered. <laughs> well, obviously, Joe Biden has been celebrating his heritage. He's very proud of it. Uh, what part of your heritage are you the most proud of and why? Here's a question. I'll start with you, Celia. I'm French and Algerian. But it's a different class system. Like, here it's working class, and in France it's like Les Mis, we sing songs. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I had to learn about the class system when I moved here, and this is how I learned about it. Once, I saw a fight in Aldi. <laughs> but then I went to m and and there I saw a duel. So it's very different, isn't it? It's... <laughs> <laughs> I always get slightly jealous as an Englishman because there are 25 million Americans with English heritage and none of them <laughs> want to bring it up, do they? <laughs> you, you, get these, you get these Scottish Americans that come back and they go, we're going to the motherland, man, we're going to get some whiskey and meet our clan. <laughs> <laughs> you never get anybody going, we're going to go back to Telford and drink some gin. <laughs> People always think that I'll have something in common with other Americans here as well. You know, like something I get a lot over here is people go like, oh, you're American. Yeah, my friend's American. You should meet her. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> if I wanted to be around Americans all day, guess where I'd be? <laughs> yeah, Edinburgh, right? <laughs> There we go. Joe Biden's trip to Northern Ireland is the right answer, Stuart and Celia. You get two points for that. Now to you, Jeff and Crystal. What was the other story we were after? Uh, I think that that was the Elon Musk interview with the BBC. Surprise. It is the news that Twitter owner Elon Musk has described running the social media platform as quite painful and a roller coaster in a hastily arranged live interview with the BBC. Musk defended sacking more than 6,000 staff when he bought Twitter, saying the firm could have gone bust without immediate cost cutting. In the lengthy interview, he also addressed his sometimes controversial tweets, admitted he sleeps in the office on occasion, and said things were going reasonably well. I think that Elon Musk thinks that he's funny, <laughs> right? This is like, it, 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 what he wants more than anything in the world is to be a comedian. You know, he, like, he changed the Twitter icon to a dog head last week. Like he like auto replies with a poo emoji and stuff. Do you know what I mean? Like this is, this is his ultimate dream. Um, and I just wanna say to Elon Musk, like if he's listening, that there are bags of unfunny comedians out there having very successful comedy careers. So <laughs> you believe in yourself, my guy. You can be one of them. <laughs> so I'm right here. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't make eye contact. <laughs> Living the dream. Oh, well, here we go. Elon Musk, it was a surprise interview, Jeff. Nobody was uh, really seeing that one coming. What did you make of it? Elon Musk has said he's going to get rid of the Twitter blue tick things, right? mm -hmm. yeah. which is this thing that shows you're verified and an important person. I have somehow managed to blag one of those, and I'm not going to have one. And it was the only thing that I was going to be able to leave to my son. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna, that was the only thing. Now. That's all we have, my generation, is, is, is online legacy. I was going to go uh, to my son and heir, at Jeff Norcott, plus my iCloud sign-in, so there's in the region of 150,000 photos of lunch there. <laughs> <laughs> it must be annoying though being the second richest person oh, in the world. Yeah. yeah. Like, if you were the hundredth, you'd be like, whatever. The second. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 First, on. Scrooge McDuck. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was interesting that he told the BBC that owning Twitter had been quite painful. And the BBC replied, you should try owning Gary Lineker. <laughs> <laughs> Um, what do you think about this then, Celia? Elon Musk is saying things are going reasonably well at Twitter. Do you agree? Is Elon doing a good job? The problem is, I guess, if you're that rich, you can just pay people to tell you you're doing a great job. Mm -hmm. Which, I'll be honest, I think I would do that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm doing it now. I haven't got the millions. It's ruining me financially. <laughs> uh, but I just need a team to be like, you're smashing it. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, Stuart, what do you think about this? We're talking about Elon Musk. He may well regret this purchase of Twitter, but what purchase do you regret? I bought a runner carpet. <laughs> for my stairs, and after six months it frayed, and they sent out an inspector. <laughs> and he says to me, swear to God, that's for occasional use, no everyday use. <laughs> <laughs> And I thought, what, well, I'm only allowed to use it on Monday, Wednesday and a Friday. <laughs> and the rest of the week, I abseiled in the banister. <laughs> well done, Jeff and Crystal. You get two points for that. It was indeed the mashup of President Biden's trip to Northern Ireland and Elon Musk's surprise interview with the BBC. And at the end of that round, well done, teams. It's all square. <laughs> Now, much of our news is about public opinion, so to find out what stories people are talking about, this week we've spoken to journalist and YouTuber Claire Johnston and actor and comedian Tom Ury. So, Jeff and Crystal, what story do you think Claire is on about here? I think you would feel annoyed if you'd splashed out money to go and see a professional sing arguably one of the greatest love songs of all time, and what you actually ended up with is some strangled, drunken <laughs> caterwauling from behind. <laughs> ah! What a love! What a beautiful rendition from Claire there. So this is the discussion about people singing too loud along with the bodyguard in Manchester. Brilliant, that's the correct answer. Yes, it is indeed the story that two audience members were removed from their seats during a performance of The Bodyguard at a Manchester theatre after they refused to sit down and stop singing along with the production. <laughs> By the way, this is not a parody. This is actual news from this week. <laughs> Ex-Pussycat doll singer Melody Thornton was unable to complete the show's final song, I Will Always Love You, as security staff were forced to eject the rowdy audience members from the upper circle. <laughs> now, in a similar vein, my uncle was thrown out of a theatre for loudly singing The Sound of Music after other audience members complained that he was ruining Macbeth. <laughs> <laughs> A punch-up at a musical, it's one of those only in Britain stories, isn't it? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like the first thing that we did after COVID was open the pubs. Only in Britain <laughs> would you... And the funny thing is with the theatre, you know, like, they always say, well, you know, we need to get broader audiences, we need to get that working-class audience into the theatre. I bet they're regretting it now, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> it's not a cherry orchard now, lads. <laughs> Stuart, what do you think about this then? Big debate this week. Should you be allowed to sing along when you go to the theatre? I think serious plays and musicals, no. Pantomime, yes. Because I used to support you when you were in panto days and if it wasn't for me shouting he's behind you, you'd be toast. <laughs> <laughs> When I heard this story, mm. I thought, it's about time live theater actors had to deal with the same things as us. Like, I went to a musical the other night. I'm, I'm not going to say what one. It was in Glasgow. But there was this scene, right, where the lead actor answered a phone. But then after he picked it up, the phone, like, kept ringing. <laughs> okay. And then, like, to cover it, he improvised a line. And he got an applause break for that, right? <laughs> And I was just like, oh my God, that was nothing. Like, you should see what I have to deal with on a nightly basis. And then just for yelling that, they kicked me out. I was like, like... <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable <laughs> behavior. What was interesting to me about the story is that a fight broke out yeah. in, the, in a musical, which as most musicals, when a fight breaks out, um, a few men came in and just started... <laughs> <laughs> For ages, people thought it was part of the show, so it was... <laughs> the harmonies were wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Last Friday's performance of musical hit The Body Card had to be cancelled due to over-enthusiastic audience members joining in the singing. Producers of The Lion King have had similar problems. When audience members complained they couldn't see Circle of Life past all the people holding their babies up. <laughs> 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 what a show that was. <laughs> there we go. Singing at the theatre is the right answer. Jeff and Crystal, well done. You get two points for that. Now to you, Stuart and Celia. What do you think Tom is talking about here? I think there are many ways where you can be greener without actually withdrawing services. Ah, to just open that door. Beautiful, fluffy white pillows, maybe with a chocolate balanced in the middle. Just pure, pristine luxury. It's an Edinburgh hotel. 
is trying to save the planet by having less regular cleaning. It is indeed the news that a hotel in Scotland is giving its guests the chance to help save the environment by giving up housekeeping visits during their stay. The Ten Hill Place Hotel will contribute towards ecological initiatives every time a guest opts out of room cleaning during a two or more night stay. Guests can also upgrade to the VIP climate package where you check into your room to find an activist glued to the nightstand. <laughs> <laughs> So there we go, Sally. You got the right answer. What are you thinking? How would you feel about giving up a room clean to fight climate change? Like, I don't clean my room every day in my house, but the second I'm in a hotel, I'm like, I turn into a pig. <laughs> and just everything becomes disgusting. I turn into a weird monarch that wants everything, every crumb taken from the floor that I've dropped. The hotel is owned by the Royal College of Surgeons. Mm -hmm. Did you know this? This is the hotel's owned. I mean, I don't fancy that. You'd be waiting 12 hours at reception until they found you a bed. <laughs> there was this quote where they said that we want to save uh, half a tonne of cash. I, I mean CO2. Uh, you go, you go, this is nothing to do... Uh, this is almost certainly to do with saving money. You go, all right, if you really want to save energy, how about not having 16 lamps on? when I get in the room. I don't know who here has been 2am, right? And you're just still up trying to work out how do you turn off the little light that, for some reason, illuminates the kettle? I don't... <laughs> well, this is interesting. Let's pick that up and run with it. What do you do in your day-to-day -day life to help the environment? I put a lot of time and effort into not cleaning. Um... <laughs> I just, like, my husband will be like, hey, like, there's a lot of laundry and dishes, you know, we should jump on that. And I'm like, or we could just wait for the oceans to rise and do it for us, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a hotel at the minute where I'm staying. Mm -hmm. um, and here's a little tip. If you're staying in a hotel and you want to help the environment, so I stuff loads of stuff in my bag from the hotel. <laughs> Just as much as I can, I put it in my bag. And with the cost of living crisis going up, I've been stuffing some gas and electric. I'm trying to get the boiler in. <laughs> uh, Jeff, what about you? Yeah. What are you doing in your day-to-day -day life to help the environment? Uh, I go for long walks uh, after I've spent half a day staring at a smart meter. <laughs> <laughs> just to work off the stress. I mean, so what is the point of smart meters, isn't it? It just, it's just made me become my dad. I'm just saying, I'm just saying my son, can't, can't you warm yourself by the heat of the toaster? Is that... <laughs> If the, if the rads are on, we should, be, we should have bacon on them. Let's, <laughs> let's think outside the box. <laughs> oh, that's lovely, that. The radiator bacon doesn't taste oh. better than that. <laughs> Stuart, what are you doing in your day-to-day -day life to help the environment? Well, my wife, she locks the downstairs toilet. That's <laughs> for visitors only, so... <laughs> No, I like to use that. I go upstairs and do it, which is hard because I'm only allowed to use the stairs on Monday, Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> Giving up housekeeping to save the planet is the right answer. Two points go to Stuart and Celia. <laughs> Listening to Breaking the News on BBC Radio Scotland with me, Des Clark. Now, this round is all about who is in the news, so I will play you a clip of a mystery person. All you have to do is tell me who it is. So, Stuart and Celia, you're first this time. Who is this? I took my brother-in-law, Christopher, who's a, a big gamer, grew up playing all these games, and he said, I think that's the best video game movie I've ever seen. Chris Pratt regarding the new Super Mario movie. That is bang on, well done. It is actor Chris Pratt, who is currently starring in the new Super Mario Brothers movie, which has defied scathing critical reviews by breaking box office records on its opening weekend. Pratt, playing the role of Mario, is joined by Charlie Day, Jack Black and Anya Taylor-Joy in the video game adaptation, which took in $377 million in its first five days. Chris Pratt is perhaps best known for his role as Star-Lord in Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. A guardian of the galaxy is also what people call me over Easter when I wouldn't share my chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like Chris Pratt had quite an inspirational career for me because he used to be quite chubby and really, really funny. And then he lost weight and he looks really hot and now he's just in terrible movies that make loads of money. And that's what I want. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to be hot enough that I don't have to be funny. And that's... <laughs> 
uh, my seven-year-old is obsessed with Mario. You know, he has all the merch. He's played it since he was a really young child. It's a big, big part of his life. Um, he even has an original Super Nintendo that he busts out around 10 p.m. to relax with a glass of wine. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, that's me. <laughs> hey, what are you thinking, Jeff? Are you yeah. planning to go and see Chris Pratt's new film? Yeah, I, w- I did go and see it myself. I'm not surprised it did well. It's the only plumber who'd work over Easter. Eh? <laughs> Come on. A lot of the buzz around the film has been around the reviews and the fact the film's done so well despite having these awful reviews. So the question is, Stuart, I'll come to you first. Do you think reviews matter as much as they used to? I don't. I mean, in 2017, I got five stars from the Daily Record for a show I performed across the world and six years later, I'm sitting here in Greenock. (laughs) (laughs) I know there's some people in the audience that, that know me, but I get, I get reviewed. I played uh, Bible John in an ITV drama, <laughs> and it get reviewed, and they described my performance as worryingly realistic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. That, lovely. Um, Celia. <laughs> uh, Celia, what are you thinking? Do reviews matter as much as they used to? I did a run of shows at Soho Theatre after The Fringe. Now, it's important that you know that on the posters for the Soho Theatre shows, we said that I received five stars from the Scotsman. That's a lie. (laughs) Uh, It was a typo. I received four stars from the Scotsman, and the poster was up for ages, and no one noticed. So it's a lesson for everyone, because it turns out you can just do that. (laughs) (laughs) Because no one checked. (laughs) I also got five stars from the Scotsman. I just got it in five instalments. <laughs> Are you allowed to quote it that way? Yeah. It's an aggregate score. That's how it works. Yeah. Uh, so we're talking about a video game from childhood that's become this hit movie. What game from your childhood do you think deserves the big screen treatment? I mean, how is Legend of Zelda not a movie yeah. yet? You know, like Pac-Man and Tron get movies, but not Zelda. I mean, like... Timothy Chalamet could be Link. Emma Watson is Princess Zelda. It's filmed like partially in the Highlands, partially in the Swiss Alps. Um, so no, I've never thought about it before. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Two points to Stuart and Celia. It was, of course, Chris Pratt. Now back to you, Jeff and Crystal. It's your turn. Who is this and why are they in the news? Well, yeah, I mean, obviously kind of right in the wave of curling fame we're, we're getting now, which is quite exciting. Just it's been an unreal journey so far. Is it Bruce Mowat? Yeah, it's curling legend Bruce Mowat, who this week led Scotland to World Men's Curling Championship gold and a dominant victory over hosts Canada. Mowat, alongside teammates Grant Hardy, Bobby Lamy and Hammy McMillan, produced a scintillating performance to win the tournament for the first time in 14 years. Yes, it is Scotland's first men's curling world title since 2009. So that's right, after 14 years of heart, it's curling home. <laughs> it's curling home. <laughs> <laughs> what an achievement it was, Crystal. I can tell you're big into the curling. I mean, what have you made of Bruce and the team's achievement? Uh, no, I think it's great. And I could only assume that it's extra special because when you're not doing well at curling, you look like a real idiot because curling is like the ultimate sport that people look at and they're like, I could have a go at that, you know? <laughs> I think Bruce said that there were 6,500 people watching in the arena in Ottawa. He said, that's huge. Why can't we grow curling here like that? Because um, curling's boring and, <laughs> and and there's nothing to do in Canada. <laughs> there's stuff get to out, do get in... Get out, get there's, out. No, no, there's stuff to do in Scotland. I've, I've seen the, the, the river. Um, the... <laughs> Can we just say this is our sport, this is our national sport. Curling was invented in Scotland in the Middle Ages as a way of getting men to pick up a broom. (laughs) 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 This is our national sport. Uh, Stuart, what do you make of it? We've won the Curling World Championships. What are your thoughts on the team's achievement? Doing it in the home patch, doing it in Canada was great. Imagine it was over here in Greenock. We'd just be the Canadian team standing at the waterfront leisure centre waiting for a kid's birthday party to get off the ice. (laughs) (laughs) 
Uh, Celia, now that you've got to take in the culture of Scotland and curling together, I think you're best placed to answer this question. Why are we so good at curling? I, I don't know. I think when it comes to... Do you have a lot of janitors here? Like... <laughs> 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 do you actually, yeah. <laughs> is that what it is? Great answer. And well done again to our gold medal winning curling team. Let's go through them. Mowat, Hardy, Lamy, Hammy, Cuthbert, Dibble and Grub. <laughs> <laughs> Get in there. World champion Bruce Mowat is the right answer. And two points go to Jeff and Crystal. <laughs> Time now for our final quickfire round, which is all about deciphering the numbers in the news. I will read out a headline. All the teams have to do is fill in the blanks. So get ready, teams. When we run out of time, you'll hear this. When you start, you don't stop. That's Radio Scotland newsreader Christine Finnegan, who's just opened her first ever box of Pringles. <laughs> 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 so, fingers on buzzers, here we go. One in four teachers are considering doing what? Stuart. Gone to work. <laughs> Let's keep it going. One in four teachers are considering doing what? Crystal. Telling you that you've been a bad, bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> it's too real for some of these people. <laughs> uh, one in four teachers are considering doing what? Celia. Is it sitting on a chair backwards and saying, how do I reach these kids? <laughs> 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 it's not, it's not that. One in four teachers are considering doing what? <laughs> Jeff. Asking the other two thirds to help me out with fractions. <laughs> <laughs> A maths joke. One in four teachers are considering leaving the profession. When you start, you don't stop. Oh, there we go. That is it. Christine is Finnegan, meaning at the end of the quiz, our winners this week are Jeff Norcott and Crystal Evans. <laughs> Cecilia E.B. and Stuart Mitchell! <laughs> and we'll leave you with the breaking the news, breaking news just in. Tupperware, the US maker of food storage containers, has warned that it could go bust unless it can quickly raise new financing. The problem started when they found out they had to replace the roof in the main warehouse, and the new roof they're trying to use doesn't quite fit. <laughs> <laughs> Hollywood stars Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney have been awarded the freedom of Wrexham, a freedom they immediately took advantage of by leaving and going straight home to LA. <laughs> <laughs> and a luxury camper van seized from the home of Nicola Sturgeon's mother-in-law was bought to be used as an SNP election battle bus. It shocked Scottish political experts who thought a battle bus was just the number 21 to Paisley. <laughs> Turtle! Are you eating a sweet? Yes, I am. Don't. I apologise. Can I have one? Give the dog a phone now and see how much you could save on car insurance.